Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 80 in Be With Me, and we're studying Revelation, 87-minute bites of Revelation. We're in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 today. I'm going to title this, Same Address as God. Same Address as God. So I live in a neighborhood, and I, some of my neighbors are so close that occasionally, sometimes, I even get their mail or maybe even a package by mistake. So I'm going to fast forward to a time that we're going to have the same address as God, and we'll be so close to God that sometimes maybe we're going to even get God's mail. So we're asking the future question, where will God be found? Let me start in Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. And I saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. So t today is not God's first day, and he's been thinking about this for a while, and he's been planning on a, a end point dwelling point, a dwelling place, and he's been making that, that ready. So for us, he's been making us ready, forgiving and restoring us. So he's been preparing a place for us. So we want to know, hey, where will I be found? Where where am I going to be found? And of interest, this is the, the thing that fascinated me today, is the place that he's been preparing us has been uh, the same place that he's been preparing for himself. So we 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 think sometimes well god is preparing a place for me but where's the place that god is going to be he's, he's preparing a place for himself as well so where will god be find, found and it happens to be on a place a physical place a new earth um and the surrounding neighbors are going to be people he's going to be found with us so we will be found with him it makes sense that the bride and the husband are going to live in the same place. So there's not like a special place for God and then a lesser place for for the for people. So he's chosen and pre planned and prepared a future of fellowship with humans. And the place he has prepared for us is the same place that he has prepared for himself, which I think is just the fascinating point from today. You can write that down. So the same place in different companies. So um, remember, I saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. So we have a little bit different company. So when he looks out his front door, he sees humans. Other, uh, other inhabitants of this place are going to be humans. He sees people. And when we look out our doors, I'm not sure we're going to have doors, but figuratively when we look out our doors we're going to see other humans same as, as god and then we're also going to see god himself so god we're asking the question if god kind of asked himself is where am i going to be for eternity well he's going to be with a people he made so he's with mankind he's dwelling the dwelling place of god is with man and then the where's the where place it's the same place as man this holy city, this new Jerusalem, this new earth, and so close with man that maybe we're going to be getting each other's mail. So who's worthy of this presence with God of, of amongst us mankind? Nobody, of course. Um, uh, he's already banished evil creatures and evil people who have not repented, and they're placed away from this presence. For those that remain, he's the only one that makes us worthy. So God may ask, who do I make worthy of my presence? Well, humans with the benefit of Christ. So we get his residing and dwelling and making his home and association with man and at this same deposit. It used to be, remember, God was usually at a separate address of people, whether that was the ark or the city of Shiloh or God's tabernacle or the temple. And if you weren't at that place, you weren't with God. Then we get the Holy Spirit that indwells us at Pentecost. And that's kind of this good deposit and this down payment on this, on this uh, uh, close physical relationship. So let's get some truths from this here. I think we should be singing and rejoicing that God has chosen to do this. 
Um, in the meantime, we can obey and walk in his ways and listen to his, his voice. And then remember that we play a role in seeing other humans called into this and maybe assessing our responsibility um, uh, to fellowship. Jeremiah 24, 7 says that I will give them a heart to know that I am God. So he, the Lord is sovereign, he gives hearts to know him. He gives hearts to know that he is Lord. And in the sense here in our analogy, to physically live with him. And if you knew that you were going to dwell with God forever, what would you do differently? And what might you like to be in the people of God? Or who who might you like to be in the people of God that's not already there? So who would you pray for a heart to know? Remember, God is sovereign. He's the one that gives hearts to know. And maybe, Lord, pray for people that their hearts would know, that they could dwell with God forever. So repeating now, in conclusion, God is preparing a place for himself. And where is God's place going to be? Well, the the, the gobsmacking uh, irony is it's the same place as that we are going to be. Where will he be found? Well, it's on a physical place. It's on, a, it's, it's on this new earth. And he's going to be found with us. And we are going to be found with him. The place that he has prepared for us is the same place that he has prepared for himself. I can't wait to be there. Join me. See you tomorrow. Thanks for listening.